Okay, so welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing cancer development. Okay, right, so we are now going to illustrate the principles of cancer development that we have uh, discussed now in general uh, for a specific case. So we're going to give an example, and the example I'm going to use is chronic myeloid leukemia. Okay, so it's cancer of white blood cells, and the white blood cells are going to be within the blood, okay, because we're talking about a leukemia rather than a lymphoma. Okay, right, uh, so, um, chronic myeloid leukemia is a nice example to use because it's going to allow us to discuss a nice piece of evidence that favours uh, the view that cancer develops from a single aberrant cell, a single cell that went wrong. Okay, so that's why this is a nice example to use. Okay, and by the way, chronic myeloid leukemia is often abbreviated to CML for short. Okay, it's also got a few slight variants on this name, okay, so you might see it referred to as chronic myelogenous leukemia. That's the same thing, okay, as chronic myeloid leukemia. Now, basically, uh, it is a cancer of the myeloid white blood cells, and I want to explain to you exactly what that means. So I'm just going to remind you about all of the different types of blood cells uh, within the blood, and then what we're going to discuss is the production of these different uh, white blood well, different blood cells from the hematopoietic stem cell. Okay, because understanding that is actually very important for understanding where chronic myeloid leukemia actually occurs. Okay, right, so let's start off with the different types of blood cell then. Okay, so firstly, we'll start off with the red blood cells. Rather than with the white blood cells, we'll start off with the more famous blood cells, the red blood cells. Okay, so red blood cells are often abbreviated to RBCs for short, and their fancy name, their more uh, medical name, okay, is erythrocytes. Okay, right, so uh, these are the cells that are the biconcave disc, okay, so I'll draw one of these like so. Okay, so this is if we've taken a cross-section through one, it will look like this, okay, and their role is to carry oxygen and carbon dioxide around the blood. So they contain a large amount of hemagglutinin, sorry, not hemagglutinin, uh, hemoglobin, um, which um, binds to oxygen and carbon dioxide. Okay, so red blood cells do not leave the blood, at least they're not supposed to. They're supposed to stay within uh, the uh, blood vessels and uh, they are involved in carrying oxygen and carbon dioxide around. Okay, right, so that's red blood cells. Next, we'll talk about platelets. So we'll talk about the two other types of um, cellular content of the blood uh, before we go on to the white blood cells. So platelets are not whole cells. These are actually fragments of cells, okay, that are broken off from a much bigger cell that is within the bone marrow. Okay, so they're little cytoplasmic fragments. I'll draw one here, so it's just a it's a membrane-bound lump of cytoplasm, basically, but it has no nucleus. Now, red blood cells don't have nuclei either, but they don't have nuclei for a different reason uh, than platelets don't have nuclei. Red blood cells were blood cells, sorry, they were normal cells, and then they lost their nucleus. They became enucleated. Platelets were never whole cells. They came from a giant of a cell, okay, which I'll show here which then sort of pinches off parts of its cytoplasm, which it chucks off as platelets. So here is a platelet being formed. It will pinch this uh, connection between this portion of the cytoplasm and the main cell off, and then it will chuck this platelet uh, into um, the blood, basically. So this massive great cell that we've got here, which is present within the bone marrow, okay? And it sort of has this little sort of tentacle-like process here. Uh, this will stretch through the wall of a capillary, so we might have the capillary here, okay, like so. So here are the endothelial cells of the capillary. Okay, I'll put the basement membrane of the capillary here, 
okay? And the mega carrier site will be sitting in the bone marrow, like so, with this process extending through the wall of a blood vessel, and then this little um, lump here being gradually disconnected and then thrown off into the blood, okay? So this type of cell is known as a mega carriocyte, okay? And these are chucking platelets off into the blood. Now, uh, platelets are extremely important in the coagulation uh, process and the uh, formation of um, uh, platelet plugs as well in hemostasis, so stopping um, blood from leaking out of blood vessels that have got holes in, repairing um, holes in blood vessels, that's what platelets are extremely involved in. Okay, so blood clotting. Although blood clotting is a bad uh, piece of terminology because you don't know whether someone's talking about physiological blood clotting, which is hemostasis. Okay, that's the good blood clotting. That's when you cut yourself and you stop bleeding. That's hemostasis. Okay, or whether you're talking about pathological blood clotting, which is thrombosis, which is when you get the whole process of uh, hemostasis activated in the middle of a perfectly intact blood vessel and then you basically clog up the blood vessel and stop blood from being able to get through it and that's extremely dangerous if it occurs in the heart and the brain. Okay, right, uh, so those are platelets. Now let's go on to the white blood cells. Okay, now uh, again white blood cells uh, have a fancy name, just like a red blood cells have erythrocytes, white blood cells are also called leukocytes. Okay, so leukocyte is the um, fancy word for all white blood cells, so this is a term that covers all the different types of white blood cells. So even though there are only one type of red blood cell and platelet, there are many different types of white blood cells, and we generally divide white blood cells into three gangs, basically, three groups. So I'll put these here. So group one, group two, and group three. Okay, so these three groups are the granulocytes, okay, which I'll put over here, the monocytes, okay, uh, and really there is only one monocyte, so I'll just call it the monocyte, okay, and then the lymphocytes. Okay. So these are the three separate gangs of white blood cells. So let's underline them all in separate colours. So we'll have granulocytes here underlined in blue. We'll have monocytes here underlined in turquoise. And we'll have lymphocyte over here underlined in orange. Okay, right. Uh, so uh, now let's have a look at the specific examples of cells within each of these groups. So monocyte, there is only one uh, cell in this group, which is the monocyte, okay? So these uh, cells have a very large nucleus, okay? And it's a, it's only got, a, well, it's a normal-shaped nucleus, whereas what we'll see in the case of the granulocytes is that they have oddly-shaped nuclei, okay? And the monocyte is really referring to the fact that the nucleus of a monocyte only has one lobe, basically. It's one blob, rather than multiple different blobs that are separate. Okay, right. So we'll call it there for this video, and we'll dis continue this discussion in the next video.